Well, that was a uh, that was a good win against a good football team. Uh, it was a significant win in terms of staying in the race. I was proud of the way we came back and fought to the end. Uh, unfortunately, we put ourselves in a hole. We've got to find a way or a method, something to uh, take care of the problems we're having on punt return. You know that cropped up again today. Uh, we work on it hard. We got some young men that haven't done it a lot, but that's not an excuse. We've got to get better there, so we will, so we don't put our defense on the field continually in those bad situations. But uh, I thought we responded. You know, um, another opportunity to learn, uh, another opportunity to. Uh, you know, I just believe firmly the only way you really truly get better is to find yourself in some adverse situations and fight through them. And. Uh, we did that today on the road in a hostile environment. I was really proud of our guys. Uh, I, I was uh, excited for Kaimi to go out there and boot that one through. I thought our offense did an excellent job of putting him in position to go make that kick. Brett uh, hung in there and, and showed great poise down the stretch. So, you know, we've got to enjoy this one here for, you know, like we say, 24 hours because they keep coming and the next one gets bigger. And that's uh, Arizona, Saturday night, 7.30 homecoming. So. Uh, you know, we'll learn what we can from this one and, and just keep trying to get better. So. Can, you, can you explain what happened on the, the coin toss and the kickoff? My only explanation that I can give you is that um, Jeff Locke, who I trust implicitly, told me that he went out there and uh, he said, we'll kick. And they said, do you mean defer? And he said, yes, I mean defer. And so there was some kind of miscommunication after that. And uh, I tried to appeal to the officials, but they were following protocol. And fortunately, we were able to overcome that. Uh, ultimately, that would be my fault, not Jeff's. You know, I believe that Jeff said we'll defer, but the official heard it differently. And uh, so if there's any miscommunication, that you know, I've got to do a better job with Jeff, giving him the proper instructions and telling him exactly, tell him, him exactly what to say. So. It seemed like the, the captains were late to the field. I mean, that, once again, that was my fault. Uh, we stayed in the locker room a little bit longer. We were we were getting hyped up, and uh, things got a little bit rambunctious, and it's a little longer to the field. And uh, We were about 20 seconds late coming out. Typically in that situation, the officials leave about a minute before the rest of the team, but it's our policy that the, team, the, the, uh, the captains, I'm sorry, the captains leave before the team. We like to go out as a team. Our captains don't like to go out ahead. And so, uh, you know, that's me. I mean, if, if we'd have lost the game because of that, that would have been uh, awful. But it's, a, it's another learning experience. Coach, talk about the composure factor for you folks from the first, their first score and then especially the last drive on you guys. Oh, I think it's a, a sign that we're maturing as a football team, uh, believing in the systems. Uh, you know, there's going to be some games like this that are just shootouts. And, uh, I was just, you know, we, we had to kind of mix and match the offensive line there at the end. You know, when, when Simon nicked his knee, and, you know, in the middle of the series, we had to shift Jeff Bach out to right tackle and put Alberto sit in there at right guard, and we really didn't miss a beat. And that's a, that's a really good front. I know they were missing a couple of, of tremendous players, tremendous players, but it still doesn't take away from the fact that that's a, that's a really good defense. It had some momentum there late in the game. Maybe early to be able to answer this question, but what, what can a win like this do for the psychology of a team and a program trying to forge an identity? Well, I just think that it helps you believe, you know, in what you're doing. When you go on the road and you find yourself in a tough environment and, you know, you, you don't come from behind once, but you come from behind twice, you know, down 14 and then down two at the end. I mean, I just think there's a sense of belief in, in yourself as a player in the systems that you're installing offensively and defensively on special teams. But you know, only if we if we don't gloss over the negatives that still happen in the game, you know, because as in any game, there's going to be some tough plays, and we've got to learn from those, and we intend to. Had you wish you made a change on the punt return before after Manfro? <sighs> Give me the first part of your question. I'm sorry. Manfro muffs the punt again. I'm saying after that happens, had you wished you'd made a change before this game? Well, I, I, you know, our options are somewhat limited there. You know, no matter what we do, we have to put a young guy in there. You know, that, those are the guys that do it best for us. And so, our other option was Devin. And we ended up putting him in there. But, and you saw, you know, he, he flung one too. Um, you know, hindsight, yeah, you always got, I wish I had someone in there. But I have a lot of confidence in Steven. You know, but I didn't feel like it would be fair to him or our team to put him back out there again. So we went with the next best option, which was Devin. What we have to do is really 
I mean, and, and we have been. I mean, we've been working hard on it. But we've got to find somebody that can really, you know, make good decisions and secure it back there because that's that's three times that it's that it's reared up. You know, we've gotten away with it a couple times, so we can't we can't continue to have that happen. And you don't want to put Andrew Abbott back there because of the load that he has on defense? No, not necessarily. I mean, he, he's just, you know, we've got guys that, that we're trying to give a chance to do it because we have confidence in him, you know. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to look at it really hard and try to make the best decision to put the best guy back there, which is what we always do, and hopefully it works out. How did you, how did you feel Brett dealt with the defensive pressure as the game went on? It seemed like maybe he was... He got more comfortable with the fact that he was getting pressured a lot. You know, yeah, playing. yeah. He, they they came after it, you know, and, and they're really good at that. And they were number one in the country in pass defense, and a lot of that is because of their their front, you know, the rush guys and the and the prep. They bring five a lot. Uh, I thought our front guys did a good job. I thought we did a good job of getting open. And I thought Brett, you know, he hung in there. He's doing a much better job now when there is pressure of keeping his eyes up the field as opposed to his eyes going down to the rush. And that's just a sign of experience. What inexperienced quarterbacks do is as soon as they, they feel pressure, their eyes go right to the rush. And you st still see him do that on occasion, but I think he's getting his eyes back up sooner. And so he's able to find a skate pass, buy some time, and if it's you know the right decision to run, run. If not, find a guy down the field. I think the next step for Brett is that uh, – Learning to when to throw it away, you know, and not take. I think we took a four-yard sack when he scrambled. I think the next thing for him is is learning when to throw it away, and that's just a, you know another step in his development. How does he handle this role mentally? You know, the role of being usually as quarterback. It's you know, he seems to handle it really well. I mean, he's mature. You know, we noticed in the spring that he uh, he was he's got great poise and he's he's even keeled and measured. And uh, you know, what you try to do in practice is put guys in situations where they. They have to solve problems, figure out things, make decisions on the move. Um, and there was times in spring ball and in, in early in fall before we made the decision he was a starter, and then after we made the decision, where if he had a negative play, he was able to put it behind him quickly, himself quickly, and get on to the next play and, and learn from it. You know, we saw it a number of times, you know, like in two minute drives, when maybe he'd take a sack in the red zone when you just can't take a sack. And these are simulated two minute drives. He wasn't getting tackled. You bring him over to the sideline, explain the situation to him, and then he'd make a heck of a play the next play. Same thing with when he'd make a good play. You know, he was able to put the good play behind him quickly. And I think that's, uh, for a young guy in the uh, in the role that he is, I think that's a tremendous credit to, to him. Jim, how do you judge a defense in a game? Excuse how do you me, judge no. a defense in a game like this? It seemed like they made some big plays at times, and then it seemed like when they went to their screen pass attack, it was tough for you to get them stopped. How do you yeah. judge them? It was, uh, I have to look at the film and see how we play. I mean, I think you have to give some credit to that quarterback. We couldn't get him down. You know, I mean, we had our hands on him and he'd, he'd bounce out of there. Uh, we, we, we had some mistakes. You know, we, we had that uh, third and long. We called the man coverage. We had some miscommunication and 15 got across in the shallow cross. We got like a 23 yard gain. Uh, but there's always things we've got to clean up. You know, we got ourselves in a shootout today, and our offense and our and our special teams, our, our field goal team, bailed us out, thankfully. You know, but we can learn from it. Coach, any uh, words of encouragement to your kicker prior to the last play? What's that? Did you talk to your kicker at all before the last play? I just, you know, I told him, hey, you're going to win it for us. You know, but you say that all the time. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know uh, Kaimi has... Uh, He's been pretty, pretty good with his shorter kicks. He struggled a little bit with his longer kicks, but we've seen him practice get better, you know. And uh, what we've tried to do as a staff is manage the, the game situations we put him in so that we can try to create success for him. And uh, we knew there was going to come a, a point in the season where he was going to have to go out and make a kick for us. And I don't think there was a kid on that sideline that didn't believe that Kaimi was going to put it through. You know, he he's, a, he's for his... For his age and his experience, I mean, he's just got a lot of, a lot of internal confidence.